Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where it is apparently quite dark where we are but I mean there's a bit of a sunset going on so that is absolutely fine. Now I'm going to take this out to the moon and we're going to see how far Jeb ends up getting here. That'll be interesting because that'll allow us to figure out some like gut level of what kind of Delta V we need to get places. So one thing we can definitely do is get ourselves into an elliptical orbit, and that is going to be necessary. So we're going to set the moon as our target here. Our ascending descending node is 1.1 degrees. That's probably fine. And sometime around here, let's make a maneuver on out. There we go. And that periapsis is currently about 200k. I want to bring that down a fair amount. So I want to bring that to around 20k. Maybe 25. Something like that. That looks relatively good. Excellent. So let's align to that node, which is going to be a fair distance. We're going to have to burn some electric charge for that. But we have plenty, and we've got 137 meters per second left in this tank, right? So that is all relatively fine. Now, one thing I'm wondering... Can we transfer between tanks? I don't think we can. So I think this is going to just burn evenly all of these tanks, which is not ideal. I want to I want to drop these tanks behind eventually, but we should probably decouple these guys while we're here. So, that would mean decoupling this. So I want I'd like to fire this stage. I guess we could just decouple these one at a time though. Okay, that did not push it out very far. Noted. But we'll just decouple that for now, and let's see what happens if we give it a bit of an aggressive turn here. And then pull it back. That should cause them to separate from us. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so with them actually separating from us, we can then warp on over... We've got about 13 minutes until this burn. So we're just leaving behind some of that weight. So that's great. This is now saying we have zero delta V. That's definitely not accurate. It should be roughly the same amount as before, like 137, I think it said. But maybe ever so slightly higher because we don't have that weight. So that's okay. We're going to commence this burn relatively shortly here. We've got about 20 seconds. We'll warp forward a little faster, and three, two, one, mark. Okay, so we're just going to burn what we can out of this stage. And then double-checking the staging here, that should be good. So once this stage is burnt out, then we're going to commence burning with this stage. And we'll see how far we get with it. I mean, I fully expect us to be able to land on the moon. The question is the return journey. We've got a lot of Delta V in this, though, so it might actually be enough as is, and I want to see how that goes. Beautiful. So we're about to burn out here. And we now have access to this mission control briefing. So I'm going to hop over to mission control really fast here, and we're going to grab this. So we'll submit that. And gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. We need this as quick as possible. Now we need to go back to the tracking station, and we need to fly this thing. Okay. So here we are, and we are burning. Excellent. That did cost us a little bit of time there. It'll be a little bit inaccurate, but that's okay. I wanted to make sure that we grabbed that science, and I didn't even look at what the further versions that we can get are. That's reasonably okay. This is going to be about a two-minute burn to transfer us out to the moon. And that's reasonably fine. We'll see what that ends up looking like. This is low thrust to weight. No doubt about that. And this might cause us some issues. Okay. Just keeping an eye on this. We'll see. It's going to create some sorts of problems, for sure. We've still got about 3,500 meters per second, though, so we can probably make this happen. Even with our underpowered first and second stages. Ooh, hello. Hang on. I believe we need to stop this burn according to the maneuver node. We, we don't actually, though. The maneuver node is incorrect. Or at least this timer is. Okay. Uh, can we throttle down, please? Thank you. 
It didn't throttle down immediately when I told it to, so that is a little bit awkward. Let's bring this around to retrograde at this time. We're currently on a collision course with the moon, and that's not necessarily what we want here. Okay, so let's bring this back out ever so slightly. That is a periapsis at this point of 36 kilometers. I mean, that's probably good enough, but I want to dial this back a little bit. It's going to be very sensitive at this point, though, so we're going to need extremely minor amounts of burn. So let's get into position for this and bring that down to about 20 kilometers. That will do. So at this point, we want to go over to the moon periapsis here. So that would be here in theory. And we want to create a maneuver plan that is going to be a retrograde burn. And we want to simply encircle the moon. So that would be not exactly what we want here. This timing is, I think, ever so slightly off. Yeah, we'll just wait until we are actually encountered here. So let's warp to about here. So off goes Jeb, warping to the moon. And here we are. Excellent. That was very swift to warp to, so that's good. Let's grab the moon periapsis here. We'll create a maneuver plan and do a retrograde burn. And bring that down to about here or so. That's only 265 meters per second to enter this orbit. 273. That's not bad. I like it. Okay, let's get into position here. We've got a lot of, like, I would really like to be able to manually flow these fu this fuel. That might be a tech that we're missing right now. Or that might just not exist in this game. But that would be something that we would need the fuel line for. Cool. So this is going to be in about an hour and a half. Let's warp forward to that. Okay. So we're about 40 seconds away from this burn at this point. Looks good. About 30 seconds away. Let's warp forward a little closer. 20, 10, and 3, 2, 1, mark. Engine ignition, and we're going to bring this right on down. About 273 total meters per second is really, really not bad. So we're going to want to get our surface velocity down until we're going basically vertical. Keep in mind that we don't have like Kerbal Engineer to tell us calculations for things like landing burns. So we're going to have to do that by gut as well. And that's going to be spicy. And we'll see just how much this takes. We might very well have enough to return home. It's going to be roughly 500 meters per second to get us back to this orbit. Some amount to get us home. And we'll see what that ends up being. But yeah, we might have enough here. And we're going to go for it. Okay, so here we are in orbit. I want to hop over to mission control real quick here and see what we've got. First dibs. Okay, that's plant a flag within a mare. And this is land on the surface of the moon. So we specifically want to land on a mare here. Okay. So with that in mind, we'll need to find one. And this debris can all be destroyed. We do not need it. It is quite unnecessary. That's just those nose cones. So we're just going to control Moonlander 1. And why is it zoomed in so much? Okay. Well, we want to land on a Mare. So that would be like one of these guys, right? So that would mean... Let's get rid of this maneuver. Sometime around here, I think... This is going to be tidally locked. I'm not sure what exactly that's going to do in KSP2 for our situation here. So that's 758 meters per second in theory. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of meters per second. I'm not actually going to do that. Let's get rid of this and let's warp to somewhere around here. Okay, because we want to land on that Mare, right? So this would be an acceptable Mare to land on. But let's just bring this around. We want to be on the day side. I want to go into surface mode, and we're going to go to surface velocity minus. We're going to burn basically horizontally here. This is way too dark still. So I want to continue to warp forward a little bit out this way. Okay, so this is entering over Amare, and we're going to commence a burn here. Shortly. 
I want to be a little further along. Yes, about here. And commencing this burn. I'm going to put this in stability assist right now. And we're just getting rid of this horizontal speed. So we need to burn about 500 meters per second to get rid of that horizontal speed. Somewhere around there. We have data from environment data from our environment samples in the low moon. That's fine. Absolutely A-OK. -okay. We're moving at about 300 meters per second. I would like to be like down here-ish for our landing. We should probably extend our landing here at some point. Now is reasonably fine. And I want to move us over this way ever so slightly. Just putting us right on that horizon. Cool. So we're currently traveling at about 200 meters per second over the surface. I'm keeping an eye on this marker here. And the closer that is to the top, the lower the percentage of our of our surface speed is here is horizontal. So at this point, I'm going to shut down the engine and we're going to put this into surface velocity minus. We're moving at about 120 meters per second. We're going to be putting down somewhere over here, which is a little bit low in like levels of light, but this is probably absolutely fine. We've got 2,500 meters per second here. And I'm keeping an eye on our ground altitude. We're about 14 kilometers up right now. So this is looking reasonably good. What is our thrust to weight? Our thrust to weight in this stage, I don't think it says here, actually. That's fine. We'll just have to feel it out. I'm going to commence a burn here at about, I think, five kilometers above the surface. Actually, maybe we should err on the side of caution and do closer to seven. We're only moving at 175 meters per second right now. I'm going to burn at 9 and see how it feels, just because I want to make sure that this is relatively safe. I'm looking at how quickly we're slowing down. Yep, this is pretty low thrust to weight. Okay, 9 was probably about correct. I'm going to put us in stability assist here because I want to get rid of a bunch of this horizontal speed, although most of this is going to vertical speed. You can see here our horizontal speed is shifting on us, and at this point, I'm going to chase that node a bit. Okay, we're going to put this in up. We're only moving at 15 meters per second right now. So, we know at this point that this is reasonably fine. We still have 2,300 meters per second here, so that's not too bad. I want to orient us this way. I'm going to keep this at surface velocity minus for the moment. We're at about 40 meters per second right now, and that number is going up a fair amount. We're five kilometers up. I'm going to commence this braking burn at about three kilometers. Feels approximately right, although... I feel like we're going a little faster than I would like at this moment. I'm going to start it at four kilometers. So right now commencing landing burn and we'll see where that puts us at we might have another coast phase here i think we are going to so let's just turn that off for the moment we're still three kilometers up and i just like to very gently sit here we'll recommence that at i think about two kilometers this is not the most efficient way to land that's for sure but given the tools that we have right now, this'll do. 2.5 kilometers. And two kilometers. Commencing burn. There was a bit of a hitch there at two kilometers. That was interesting. So commencing that burn, we're down to 20 meters per second. I want to bring it down to about 10 here. There we go. That'll do for now. Letting it drop a little bit further. Down to one kilometer from the surface shortly. Okay, commencing braking burn again. 
from here we just want to just gently lower it down so we're going to be running this in a very slight deceleration at this point little bit more deceleration let's put this in up and we're at about 10 meters per second over the surface okay we're still like 600 meters up so i'm gonna let us fall for a little bit here 500 meters up, 400, and 300 meters up. Commencing braking burn. Cool. I want to hold us at around this speed, just gently decelerating. Very gently, ideally. I want it to be about here. That's accelerating. I guess that's okay for right now. Let's get that decelerating a little bit. We're currently 100 meters above the ground, and a very gentle deceleration should do the trick. So 4.2 meters per second, 4 meters per second. 3.5. We can see we're starting to kick up regolith. 3 meters per second. Decelerating slightly faster. There we go. 1.8 meters per second. And we have touchdown. Excellent. So, here we are, touchdown on the surface. We've got about 2,000 meters per second left. So, even with that very, very weak first and second stage, this is not too bad, all things considered. So, let's hop... Actually, let's not hop to the tracking station yet, because we need Jeb to EVA here. Moonlander 1 on crashing trajectory? No, it's not. It's landed. It's fine. No problem whatsoever there. So at this point, we can do our research opportunity. Yes, that's probably already done. Let's bring Jeb on down. Get your RCS out, Jeb. Okay, I want Jeb to hop on over this way, and we want to run our surface survey. That's going to take 10 seconds. Okay. So he's just grabbing some regolith in the test tube. That's fine. And we'll run the crew observation as well. He appears to be recording his thoughts. Excellent. Well done, Jeb. Now he's going to plant his flag. The site name is going to be... Is this where we want to put our base in the future? Probably not. Well, actually, it's probably fine. This is equatorial, so... I mean... Proposed base site. Plaque text. Jeb was here. Definitely. Okay, there we go. We're bo mostly only doing that to uh, get our mission control objective. So that's fine. At this point, I want to get Jeb with the jetpack on, please, Jeb. Okay. Took him a hot minute to turn that on. That's fine. So he's going to climb back in at this point. And I want to make sure that we have run this environment survey. It looks like we have. Experiment for that region already in storage. Perfect. So now I want to head back to mission control. And we're going to grab first dibs, getting us 100 science. Fantastic. And we're going to grab one small step, getting us 300 science. Perfect. What else do we need to have? Yes, we did indeed land on the surface of the moon. So next up, we've got Mooner Signal. Find the source of the mysterious signal on the moon. Interesting. So we'll have to land at a fixed point there. We may want to track this one. Exit Kerbin's Gravitational SOI. That will happen automatically as part of our missions here, but... We're not going to do that yet. And then Lonely Satellite. Orbit Corbin with a pro... Corbin? <laughs> Orbit Corbin with a probe core, antenna, and solar panel. That's easy enough. We're going to want to set up commsats eventually anyway. So that's fine. I want to he head into the tracking station here and see where is the site of that... This is the site of the Mysterious Signal? I mean, that's quite a long ways away. But we're kind of close to it. 
We'd probably want to do a separate landing there, though, in all honesty. We don't really have the fuel to hop over there, I don't think. So for the time being, I think we're ready to bring Jeb back at this point. There's not all that much that we're going to do here. So we're going to lift on off, and we're going to retract our landing legs. I'm going to immediately start moving us out over on the 90 degree axis. And we're going to put this about here. 5,000 kilometer is reasonably fine. So let's start getting some horizontal speed at this point. We want to enter orbit. Cool. We can see time to apoapsis is going down right now. I expect that to change pretty quickly. We only need about another 300 meters per second to enter orbit here. So that should be A-OK. -okay. And we're targeting an apoapsis of probably about 20 kilometers, I'd have to say. So that'll be absolutely fine. The question is, does Jeb have enough fuel to return home on? Hopefully. Also, does he have a heat shield here? I'm pretty sure there's a heat shield under there, right? I don't know. That'll be interesting. Um, <laughs> maybe. Maybe there's a heat shield there. We'll have to figure that out. Surely I remembered a heat shield, right? Surely. Okay, we're at about 26 kilometers, and we are going to grab a maneuver plan here. We'll just circularize that up. That's not going to take very much delta V at all. Yeah, that's like 31 delta V. Looks good. So we'll align to that maneuver node, and uh, I'm assuming there is a heat shield here. What is the heat tolerance of this? I don't know. We might have to be very careful on our re-entry. We'll probably be okay either way. As long as we're reasonably careful on a re-entry. We've got a fair amount of DV left, so I'm not too concerned about that. Let's just warp on over to this location. Four minutes, and we will enter orbit of the moon. Cool. About 30 seconds to go. 20, 10, and 2, 1, mark. This is good enough. So that will be absolutely fine. Next up, we're going to come about here, and we'll see how this goes this time. Oh, that's much better. Okay, so it was probably due to the height of the orbit previously. So we want to bring this to a relatively safe periapsis here, because I'm concerned about a lack of heat shield. We may or may not have a heat shield on this. So I'm going to be targeting an apoapsis of somewhere around... A mere 50 kilometers here. And we're going to do a braking burn. Once we get there, we're going to use our engine as a heat shield. Because I think I forgot a heat shield here. <laughs> I'm 99% I'm certain that I did. It's fine. We can use all of this as a makeshift heat shield. So let's get into position for that. That burn is going to be in about 35 minutes. Noted. And this is not where we want to be, actually. We want to be rotating around to the node here, not actually to anti-normal. That would not be ideal. An anti-normal burn here would not do much. That's for sure. The node is going to be right up over here. Let's warp on to that. We're very close to it at this point, so let's go ahead and warp. 30 minutes. 25 Cool. So we're going to go around to the dark side of the moon. And then, of course, we're going to come out on the light side. And we're going to be burning, well, prograde in order to go to Kerbin. We burn this direction in order to go here. It makes a lot of sense. So we're going to just do that. We've got 40 seconds to go here. 30, 20, 10, and 3, 2, 1, mark. I'm going now. So 314 meters per second for our return journey. And technically, at this point, arrow braking would bring us back as long as we nail this reasonably well. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll probably fine tune this a little bit. But this is definitely doing exactly what we expect it to do. No problem on this return trajectory. Going to be stopping the burn about here 
and let's see where that put our periapsis. 113 kilometers. So we want this to be on prograde here, and I want to continue to bring that down. Angling for uh, 45 is okay. And we're going to do a re-entry burn once we arrive there. So this periapsis, I would like to virtually circularize this, but I'm going to burn all of our remaining fuel, 978 meters per second of that. So that is going to be burned here in a retrograde burn. And that would be 978 in total. So the remainder of our fuel would be this. Cool. So that technically puts us on a impact trajectory. Maybe we don't want to go that far down. Maybe instead we want to circularize this at somewhere around 45 kilometers. So that would mean having the periapsis be about here. What is the apoapsis if we do that? That's 213k. So that's not exactly what we want. What I want here is for that apoapsis to be about the 45 kilometer mark. So that would end up being somewhere around... Okay, that's no, no fuel for that. Sure, this is fine. This is absolutely A-OK. -okay. We'll just lock to this maneuver node and we'll do it from there. So that's okay. We're going to warp on around and let's get into position for this. We're going to use our engines and fuel tanks as heat shields. Because apparently we forgot to include a heat shield on this, which is not the smartest thing in the world. And we're going to warp on over. That's going to be in about a day. Sure. Okay, so here we come. And we are over Kerbin. Beautiful. So we are back home at this point, approximately, approximately back home. And we need to commence this braking burn in about two minutes at this point. We don't quite have the re required Delta V allegedly for it, but we're just going to bring this right in a 45 kilometer periapsis. There's going to be a lot of aero braking and we're currently 100 kilometers above the surface. So let's just get ourselves into position for this braking burn. Yes, we're going to enter the atmosphere here. And that is absolutely understood. So this is the fastest we can go at this point. I'm going to commence the braking burn now to reduce the heat stress on the vehicle. And yes, this is going to be awkward. I'm going to get rid of the maneuver. I was just using it for timing. I want to position us at retrograde here. Beautiful. So we're going to be seeing the apoapsis shrinking significantly here. But we want to keep lots and lots of air between us and the ground. That's the idea. So a periapsis of currently 42 kilometers. We can see time to periapsis is increasing. That is, of course, expected. We're not going to be coming back out of this atmosphere. We have managed to drop down our orbital velocity a fair amount here. But I'm going to continue this braking burn until such a time as we're out of fuel. We want to burn every ounce of fuel we've got on slowing down here. Because lack of heat shield is a lack of heat shield. Cool. We're using our tanks and our engine as a heat shield, and we're also braking with our fuel, so that is absolutely fine. And at this point, we can see our periapsis is negative. That's okay. We just want to slow down as much as possible. We're now officially below orbital velocity, and we are also officially out of fuel as of now. That's not bad. 2,100 meters per second. I like it. We're actually going to be landing very close to the KSC as well. KSC is not too far away. Not that that really matters, I think, in science mode, but that's cool. So the next question is, do we even want to try to separate these? We'll do it if the parachutes aren't strong enough, but we're going to be splashing down in water, and I think that the parachutes will be strong enough. I want to go to surface mode here, and we can see our surface speed is down to 1800. It's not going down tremendously quickly here, and we are seeing heat gauges beginning to build up. Okay. That said, we're still pretty high up. The atmosphere is still quite thin here. Okay. We're slowing down at a pretty appreciable rate at this point. I think that that braking burn 
probably did the trick. We'll recover as much of this as we can. Not that it really matters in science mode, but we'll still do it. Unfortunately for us, this is our lander can that is currently overheating a bit. Which is very unfortunate. That said, we're only at 1400 meters per second. And I think, yeah, our plasma sheath is, I think, reducing at this point. 1200 meters per second. Atmosphere is getting a little bit thicker, but yeah, I think we're going to be fine on that front. The real question is, do we have enough parachute capacity to bring in all of this, right? We're currently tumbling, apparently. Which is fine, but this isn't the direction we want to be in. I didn't expect this to be aerodynamically unstable in that regard, but it's okay. Next out, we should get our drogue shoots. The, the drogue shoots may be enough to pull us back around, which would be ideal. So drogue shoots are out. We're down to just 300 meters per second. We're still 15 kilometers up. So that looks good. We can get the main shoot out now as well. So let's do that. And that'll continue to slow us down. We're probably going to get yanked around when these shoots deploy. Would be my expectation. The question is, how fast will we be going after the shoots deploy when we've got all of this apparatus attached, right? We can ditch a lot of weight there, but we would prefer not to if we can get away with it. 100 meters per second before any deployment. Okay. Drogues are deploying now, and those are enough to pull us around. 45 meters per second. Main is deploying now. Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on that speed. That's about 11 meters per second. We might lose a couple of these components on impact, but this is a splashdown. I think as long as it's a splashdown, this is probably an acceptable speed. I don't think deploying the landing gear will do anything here, but I'm going to do it anyway, just in case that cushions us a little bit somehow. Of course, in water, it really shouldn't. But that might take a little bit of the stress. Okay, let's just splash this down and see what happens. Nothing breaks at all. Beautiful. That was phenomenal. Really, really happy about that. Let's have Jeb EVA here, and we are going to have him jump down. I'm going to run the surface survey. He needs to not be attached to do that, it seems. So we're going to run that surface survey. And then we're going to run the crew observation as well. That was really successful considering how much we had in terms of Delta V concerns. But overall, that felt really good. Imagine if we had a decent first and second stage on it. <laughs> okay, experiment for that region already in storage. Sure. Let's just hop back in and let's recover this. So we'll recover the vessel. That'll be fine. We've got the environment samples of surface sample data from curb and splashed water. Crew observations, entire environment samples, there are, I think, more samples than is being said here. Because we've got 231 from samples. So that's moon low orbit, but there's more here than is being said. I'm 99% certain. We can see we're going to make, like, f almost 500 science off of this. So let's recover that vessel. And there we go. Fantastic. So our research report got us a bunch of science. Yep, that is great. Let's head back to the KSC, and we're going to hop into the R&D center. We have a thousand science at this point. So let's grab medium orbital rockets and fuel lines. That alone is going to help us a lot. Then I'm going to finish up these tier one researches. We're just going to get them out of the way. They're all very cheap, and that's fine. Cool. Cool. So at this point, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to see about slightly redesigning that and probably going to go land at the location of that radio signal. I feel like we should probably do that. If we hop over here, there's the lunar signal there. And I mean, we can do lonely satellite as well. Both of those would be fairly easy to do in theory, but 
the Mooner Signal, we should definitely bump up the power of that first stage. We'll see how that ends up going. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nix Marty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.